Okay, we're going to talk about our suspension analyzer today. And here you can see we're starting at the main screen. And the suspension analyzer comes in three different versions. The most basic is called basic, and it's front end only. The upgrade from that is full vehicle, which is front and rear suspensions together, and plus some other features like push rod and pull rod springs and some other uh, more special case suspension features. And then full vehicle with data logger options. And that adds some other features to the program, the biggest one being you can import data logger data, shock travel steering sensors, track map data, and do a lot of more detailed analysis with your data logger data. So what we're going to start with here is the basic version, which is front end only. And the first thing when you get your program after you install it is you'll want to unlock it. And that means take the 10-day restriction off. And what we'll need when you want to unlock it is we need the computer hardware number, your registered name, and registered code number. And if you got a CD or a book from us, there's a four-digit serial number on the CD or inside the book. Send that also. You could email that, for example. And we'll give you an unlock number. And that'll take the 10-day restriction off. And you get two unlock numbers to have it on two computers at any one time. So mm -hmm. this program is already unlocked. You can see it doesn't like that because I didn't put a number in. But uh, basically how the program works is there's a bunch of, and you can see this data down here, This these numbers represent the X, Y, and Z coordinates for different points, like this ball joint here, for example. X is distance out from the center, Y is distance up from the ground, and Z is a depth measurement that if we click on top view, the Z measurement is from this line here connecting the two spindles. That we call the axle line or spindle line. And Z is the distance in front or behind this line. And you see this little arrow in the top view is pointed towards the front of the car. And Z to us means depth into the car. So a positive Z number would be behind this axle line towards the driver. If you have lines like this, uh, the bell crank and stuff here on your steering points, your tie rods, that would be negative Z directions. And you luckily you can always check by just looking at the top view and you put your numbers in, you can see if it's being drawn right. So those are the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So let's say we go back to our front view here, and we got a side view, top view, and no view. If you want a lot of numbers to be seen on the screen at one time, you can go there. But let's say we're going to change a number here. Let's say we got the upper ball joint, this point right here on the red side, which is the left side. And instead of that number, and you can see there's a lot of digits on these numbers, that's because this actually came from a Winston Cup team. And they can measure the things with tremendous precision. But let's say we want to make a change to that. Let's say it's not 20 inches up from the ground, it's 22 inches up. And after you press or enter a number, you want to press Enter so the program knows you're done. So press Enter. And then watch this point here move. See how it's moved up? And you'll notice, I don't remember what it said here, but your roll center locations have changed. Probably some camber and toe gain numbers here have changed also. And if you look down in the program, further down, I'm sure some other numbers would have changed from that. And we'll show you later how you can actually figure out what changed. But that's how you basically enter numbers in. You measure the x, y, and z distance. And this is not that easy. It takes a lot of time. And Appendix 4 in the books, we'll talk about it. Uh, appendix 4.1 in the book gives you some tips on measuring a suspension. Um, but anyway, let's go through some of these inputs here. This happens to be for a double A-arm type suspension. You could also do McPherson strut on the front end. But you can see here we have some inputs here, the type of parameter we got here, input. If it's got a CLC after it, that means that you can calculate it from other things, that particular input. This happens to be our ball joint wizard, which is only available in the full vehicle with data logger options. So let's not get out of that because we're talking basic. But we got uh, inputs. We got more inputs. I'm scrolling down over here. Now we get to some outputs. Spring rate here, though, is an input. And this one does have a calculation menu that you can put some numbers in and calculate the spring rate. And let's say number of inside diameter, let's say, I'm just putting in junk here off the top of my head. And it calculates out, well you can see that's way too, um, 
too small. There, that's a little more reasonable. But uh, if you want to use that number, that spring rate, we calculated from this specs. And just to show you, if we go up to 0.5, it's very sensitive to wire diameter. If I wanted to use that instead of the 650, I would just say use that value and load it in right here. So there you have inputs, some with a calc option, and we have outputs. And outputs are what will happen um, being calculated. I'm sorry, these are things that are being calculated from what are inputs. For example, toe in in degrees is an input, but toe in in inches is an output. And when we start to uh, make changes here, this is why you bought the program, so you can see what happens when you start going through dive and roll. You're going to see certain things change. An interesting thing would be, for example, camber. As we start going through dive and roll, you can see down here, camber just started out at 5 at right height. He's now at 4.15. We've lost almost a degree of camber on the left and almost 0.73 degrees on the right. If we go through roll, and you can click on these arrows, you can actually type a roll right in. You can see how things change. You can look down here at toe, how toe has changed, changed quite a bit on the right. And a number of other things here, where the roll center has moved to, height and how far to the right it is, uh, anti-dive. Uh, I think there's some swing arm lengths down in here. Yep, where's swing arm lengths? There's the swing arm lengths and stuff. And you can see how these points are moving around up here on the screen. Let's get rid of that. And you can see that, for example, black here is the roll center when it's gone through a tenth of a degree of dive. And here's where it started. As you can see here, you can see how things are moving. Um, the red has moved starting the static point, and here's a new Red point, this is your instant center for the left side. Here's your instant center for the left or right side. Some other things that are interesting in the program are what we call the toe gain, camber gain, and caster gain. What gain means is how much will caster camber and toe change with a particular amount of standard amount of suspension movement. Right now, we've got gain based on one inch of dive. So it's saying right now, toe gain is very small, almost zero, when the car goes through one inch of dive. Now, if you change something, this is useful. Let's say we change a, a tie rod location. Let's say tie rod on spindle. Right now, it is out at that position. Let's say we change that to 21 inches instead of the 22 point, whatever it was there. We press enter. Toe gain, it actually got better. It surprised me. Let's go the other way, 24. But you can see as soon as you make a change, you'll get an update on what toe gain is doing. And toe gain is basically bump steer. If we put this spindle in a bad position, let's say 6 inches, you can see how toe gain has now changed. We don't have to send the car through any kind of dive and roll. Toe gain stays the same because it's, what is the toe change when the suspension is going through one inch of dive? And this is happening behind the scenes to figure this stuff out. You can see here's the camber gain if we change things. Uh, if we put this back, you see the camber gain here is one, minus 1 1.73. If we put this back at 20 inches, see how much that changed that, but our toe gain really messed up too there. But this is a very handy feature also in the program. If you don't like that we're basing things on one inch of dive, you can change this. It's held in preferences, and we'll get to that in a little bit in another movie. A big feature with all programs is when you're making these changes, building your files, for example, you want to save your changes. That's why you got a computer program here so you can save it. So what you do to save what you're doing is click on File, and then either Save, which means it's going to save it to the same name we got up here, or Save As. Save as is actually the safer thing to do because uh, you know you're not overwriting some old data. So I'm going to do this right now, and I'm going to save it um, as Rev 1, Revision 1. So let's say you ever want to go back. You might have Revision 2, Revision 3 in the future. Let's say you screwed up on Revision 3. Things have really gone to pot. 
and you want to go back to revision two before you made some changes, it's going to be in your in your library. And let's look at what we got in our library. When we opened from all save suspension, there it is. This is the suspension we just created. And you can see when we click on it, if we had more, we could click on them. But we just have this one. It shows you a preview of what this test was. So you can see what's going on over here. Say, oh, that's the test I was looking for. Or maybe it's not the test you're looking for. So anyway, another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build a new suspension. Well, there's a couple ways to build a, a new suspension. Let's say for your car. One way is to click on File and New, Start New Suspension. Okay, and it's going to say, okay, on this new suspension, it's going to suggest the name. As you can see, it's already suggested a name that makes some sense. What it's going to do is increment this last number by one if there was a number there. It lets you uh, store it in a certain folder. Folders are groups of tests that make sense. And the default that we give you is a folder called My Test. And whatever else you might want to carry over to the new test. Test comments, they'll blank them out if you don't want to carry them over. Maybe you want to carry the steering system over. Um, but anyway, it lets you pick what kind of specs you want to carry over from the existing suspension that's on the main screen here to this new suspension. And I know what a lot of people might want to do is, eh, other specs are some critical things. I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to blank out the test comments. And I'm going to say, okay, start up this new suspension. And here you are with a blank sheet of paper. And you say, great. Isn't this great? Because I don't, I can, I know exactly what I'm going to type in, but you got to type in a lot of numbers to do this. And the other downside of this, until you get lots of numbers in, nothing is going to be drawn up here. And it could be as simple as I need to put in the tire circumference or the tread width to get everything drawn. It might be that last number that all of a sudden the picture appears. That can be kind of tough to type a bunch of numbers and not knowing if they're close to being right. But the other thing you could do, instead of doing this, you could click on File, Open from All Save Suspensions, and you can see we got Rev2 up here now. It automatically saved it to that new name. And you can go to one of the Performance Trends examples that comes with the program. And, and you can pick, let's pick this Legends here because you're working with a Legends or a smaller car. You open that one, and it has numbers for everything typed in. They don't match your car, but some of the some of these numbers will be close. And the numbers that you know are not close, you can just change them. And the advantage is you'll keep a drawing here all the time. So you'll know immediately if you type a number that's wrong. Let's say you type a number in here and you go 44 instead of 14. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see right away, look how wrong that is. And you know that's wrong. Oh, you say, oh that was supposed to be 14.6. Mm -hmm. And it puts it back. So this is the way I suggest doing it. Now, before you start modifying uh, one of these files, or even after you start, it's not that big a deal, you'll want to save this to a new name like we did before so that we don't screw up the example legends that was there. Actually, we prevent that from happening. We try and watch for that. But you want to save that to a new name. Maybe it's called My Legends, stored in My Test. Okay, and you can see now we got my legends up here. If we click on file open, we've got a new file in there, my legends. Okay, and then you can go through this screen and make modifications. Another option that's real handy is um, click on file, print a blank worksheet. That's real nice. So you got a nice piece of paper you can write all this stuff on, take it to your shop. Um, so, anyway. I'm going to uh, conclude this now because we've got to get to a lot more stuff in the next movie. So that concludes this intro movie.